اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم والحمد للہ والصلاة والسلام اللہ اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین سیدنا و نبینا و حبیبنا و مولانا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و علی آلہ و صحابہ و معنی تدابی حدہ الى یوم دین فائنا خیر الحدیث کتاب اللہ و خیر الحدی حدی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و شار الامور مہدثاتها و کولا مہدثات بدیا و کولا بدیا دلالا و کولا دلالت فی نار اما بعد مہن دیا برادر سنسیسا سن اسلام السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ تعالی و برکاتو Welcome to the House of Dua. Welcome to our continuing conversation on the series titled The Quran from the Quran. The series from which we bring you verses and commandments from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this book, Al-Quran al-Karim. Thalik al-Kitabun la riba fi huda lilimotekin. Without doubt, this is a book that is a guide of guidance to those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I'm sure you have a copy or more of this book in your homes. Today we are trying to remind ourselves of verses revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the need for us to care for this book, to be careful the way we handle this book. We belong to a religion in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not leave out anything. Even handling of this book It's an issue that is of tremendous importance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he revealed verses of the Quran to us, reminding us of our responsibility to make sure that we care for this book. We handle it properly. We save it from abuses. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in the life that we live, we are very conscious of our material stuff, our possessions. The cars we buy, we use, we clean them, we make sure they are up to date. We look for the latest all the time. Our houses are clean, our clothes are clean, we are conscious of the food we eat. We take care of every bit of stuff that we have. What about the Quran? Does it occupy a special place in your heart in that same manner? Do you care for it? Do you think about it? Do you protect it? And dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us take a look at another issue, the cell phone. Many of us have this nowadays. We are so much attached to it emotionally, psychologically, and otherwise. To the extent that once it's missing in our life for a second, we panic. As if Kiyama wants to happen. Once we lose it, we find ourselves in trouble. That is how important the cell phone is to us. And yet, it's a communicative device between you and those whom you love. But the communicative device between you and Allah is the Quran. This is the book by which he communicates to mankind. And this is the book by which he expects mankind to communicate back to him. The same way we care for the cell phone and pay attention to it. We keep it in our pocket. We keep it beside our bed. We keep it beside our dining table. We keep it on the table in the office, expecting a call or receiving a call or you yourself making a call. And we don't want to lose sight of it for a second. That's what a true companionship means. Do we have the same level of companionship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the book that he has sent down to us? Do we care at all? Unfortunately, we don't. That speaks volumes of how wrong our priorities are. As a matter of fact, it's the Quran that is supposed to receive the best attention from us every day, but yet we neglect it. We abuse it. We disrespect it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. Recently, I visited a couple, my friends. While in their city room, I noticed the Quran in their room Some pages were in shreds. And I asked the question, why was this so? The wife was the first to jump in to say, you know what, it's our little baby who was playing with the Quran that taught the Quran. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that is not an acceptable explanation. 
the children do not know what they do. We should not allow them to abuse the Quran. As much of all, we are supposed to train them to respect the Quran. But even then, the children have no responsibility for their action. That's why they are children. Whatever they do, therefore, we as parents are accountable for their behavior until they reach the level of balaga. And that is why in one of the most beautiful hadiths of Rasulullah wasallam, he stated that the pain has been lifted in respect of three categories of people. Lifted in the sense that such people, their action or inaction is not recorded against them. There's no sinfulness for their action or inaction. Who are these people? A child. Why? Because the child has no sense over what he's doing. He may not meet badly. Therefore, his actions are not judged against him. His actions and inactions are not recorded. That's what it means by the pen is lifted in respect of a child. So the pen is lifted in, this, in respect of somebody who is asleep, deeply asleep, that he, he doesn't know what is going on around him or her. Even if Salat is passed and he, that person does not pray while he was asleep, it's not accountable for it, it's not recorded against him or her. The same thing happens to the person who has fainted, who is unconscious. For as long as you are unconscious, you are not accountable for your action or inaction. For these three people, the prophet said the pen is lifted. Therefore, the child has no responsibility for abuse of the Quran in the home if the Quran is exposed in such a way for the child to abuse. The responsibility for that abuse is on the parents. Let us be careful about this. We are raising it because we know it's not isolated to the family I visited. It's common to many of our homes. Many of us do not care for the Quran. And if you, don't, if you don't care for the Quran, how do you expect your child to care for the Quran? The child learns by example by following what he sees you do. If you respect the Quran, definitely the children in the home will also respect the Quran. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the revealer of this Quran, has taken some responsibility upon himself to make sure that the Quran is well preserved and protected and safe from adulteration. In Surah al hijr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna nahano nazal na zikra wa inna la it is we who has revealed the zikra, another name of the Quran. It is we who shall protect it from adulteration or abuse or alteration by those who do not believe in the Quran. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated. And in Surah al waqia Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares, Fala okosemo be mawaki no Wainahu <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by these verses reminds us of a very important thing and that is the special status he has granted to the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I swear by the setting of the stars. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take this oath? Whenever he has an important thing to deliver to us, he starts by acknowledging with an oath. Out of the creatures he has created. In this case, he said, I swear by the setting of the stars. What a great oath, if only you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath to remind us that this Quran is an honored Quran. It's a book that is specially honored. 
Take it out there, And this Quran, as we read it in this planet, comes from the book that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the book of life, the book of creation, the book of judgment, the book that stays eternal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from which verses were revealed to Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam for a period of 23 years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this Quran is an honored book. Is given special status by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's so special, no one touches it except the one who is pure. Only the angels in heaven that are pure have access to the Quran that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the same token, only those who are pure among us should have access to the verses of the Quran that have been sent down. To Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And their brothers and sisters in Islam, that is important because the book is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we conscious of that? Do we take adequate precaution to make sure that the Quran is preserved and respected? Because of the sacredness of the Quran, that is why we are not allowed to touch the Quran at will except that we are pure. You go to the restroom, you have to purify yourself before you touch the Quran. As beautiful and as sweet as love making is with your wife, you cannot touch the Quran until both of you have purified yourselves before you touch the Quran after intercourse. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, a woman who is also going through a monthly cycle is not allowed to touch the Quran until she is pure and purified herself. These are precautions taken to make sure that the Quran is not abused or neglected. So we are not allowed to dump the Quran anywhere, especially places that are accessible to non-believers. That is why you cannot find copies of the Quran laid out in the hotels that are frequented by those who do not believe in the Quran. No one touches it except the one who is pure. My dear brothers and sisters, nowadays, however, we find that many of us are guilty of abusing the Quran at home and outside. Whenever there is nikah, whenever there is a walima to the Quran, or any other activity like that, and the verses of the Quran are being recited, you see people get carried away by food, by dressings, by, you know, other excitement of the moment. Even when the Quran is being recited, they don't pay attention, they make noise. That should not be the case. It is the disbelievers, those who do not believe in the Quran, that have such attitude to the Quran. From day one, they oppose the Quran, they make effort to make sure that the Quran is drummed out or is obscured. So that those who are supposed to benefit from it will not benefit from it. In Surah Fusilat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledged this. When the disbelievers of Makkah were making effort to make sure that the Quran is obscured. In other words, they drum it out to a level where nobody will hear its reading. They thought that the only way they can gain upper hand or gain victory over the believers, over the Quran, is to make sure that they obscure the voice of the Quran, to make sure that no one hears it. So whenever the Prophet was reading the Quran, they would be beating drums or beating music or, you know, blasting all kinds of music around. So that nobody will hear the Quran. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fala no zikan na lezi na kafaru o azaba shedida wala na jazi yanda o asuwa kano ya malo. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We shall punish them for what they have done by opposing the Quran, drumming it out. And we shall requit them with that which is worse than what they have done. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you can see therefore that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take it kindly with those who want to abuse the Quran. What about us? He has specifically revealed verses to us 
The Mighty knows that whenever the Quran is being recited, we should listen, we should honor, we should respect it. That's why in Surah Al Araf, chapter 7 of the Quran, Allah says, Wa iza kuri ali Quran, faste mi ola, wa situ la alakun turuhamu. When the Quran is being recited, listen to it, pay attention, be silent. Go on, see to be quiet, no noise making. La alokum to Ramun, so that you receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, what a powerful, powerful injunction is here. How many of us pay attention to it? How many of us listen? In our home, the Quran is being recited, the TV is on, or music is blasting. That's a disrespect for the Quran. My dear brothers and sisters Islam, let us cultivate the habit of honoring this book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that it is not only ourselves that listen to this book. Even the jinns, they listen to it and they honor it. What is this Arafuna Eleka Nafaramina Jin? Yes, tell me, oh, Nale Quran. Falama had Daru Kalu Ansi to Falama Kudia. Wala Ela Kaumi Mozere. Ya kaumana ina semina kitaba unzila me bade musa ya de ilale hakki wa ila sirati mustaki Rasban what Allah said the jinns were dispatched to listen to the Quran. It was Allah who dispatched them to go and listen to the Quran while the Prophet was reciting the Quran. And when they got there, they told themselves, Ah situ. Listen to this. This is beautiful. This is amazing. That's what they told themselves. And when they finished listening to the Quran, they went back to their people and told them, Yeah, Kaumana, oh, our people, in Asemina Kitaba, we have listened to a book, a wonderful recitation, Muzila Mibadi Musa, the book that was revealed after the time of Musa. That is the Quran. And they told their people, it guides to the truth and it guides to the straight path. Therefore, respond to the call of the one who is calling. Respond to the call of Muhammad. Look at the disposition of the genes towards the Quran. What about us? Even when the Quran is being recited, we are playing music. Unfortunately, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this should stop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he himself makes sure that whenever we are reading the Quran, he protects the Quran against those who do not believe. In Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa iza kara'ata le Quran, jalina abenak, obena lazina la yuminun, bin akhiratin hijaban, mastura. Whenever you are reading the Quran, ya Muhammad, and even your believers too, whenever they are reading the Quran, we place between you and those who do not believe a hijab, a veil, or a protection, a barrier to protect the Quran from being listened to by those who do not believe in it, who ultimately will have intention to frustrate the Quran or to obscure it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm aware of this, therefore I take precaution to make sure it doesn't happen. What about ourselves? We also have a responsibility to make sure that the Quran is well protected and preserved so that it doesn't get abused by those who do not believe in the Quran. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to that whenever we want to read the Quran, we should seek refuge in Allah against the shaitan because shaitan is always around to cause abuse of the Quran. Faiza kara'ata al Quran, fasta izibilahi mina shaitani. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you are reciting the Quran, seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why whenever we want to read the Quran, we say, I will be lying in a shaitan regime. 
to seek refuge in Allah against the accursed shaitan. It's an important statement for us. It's a part of honoring and preserving the Quran against adulteration and abuse. Therefore, let us learn to recite that from time to time. Honoring the Quran is important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Seek refuge in Allah against the shaitan when you are reading the Quran. For the shaitan has no authority over those who believe in Allah. He also only has authority over those who turn to him. We ask Allah not to allow us to turn to the shaitan. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, preserving and honoring the Quran is very important. It's not sufficient for us to say, I memorize the Quran, or I read it every day, I use it to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then we allow the Quran to be exposed to all forms of adulteration, or abuse, or neglect, either in the home or outside the home. The Quran is not expected to be found in any place that is dirty. The proper place for the Quran, therefore, should be the masjid or your home in a secured and respected location. And the brothers of Islam, the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in the hadith narrated by Abi Bakr and gave us a parting word during his last and only pilgrimage. One of the final things he mentioned was, I'm leaving behind for you two great things, the Quran and my Sunnah. The Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam refers to the hadith of the Prophet, his sayings, his actions, his disapprovers. And he said, whoever holds on to the Quran and the hadith will not go astray. What that means, therefore, is that we should hold on to the commandments of the Quran and the injunctions from the Hadith. And we should also make sure that these two great sources of guidance for us are respected and honored and cared for. So, we have decided to use the opportunity of today's presentation, therefore, to remind you and remind myself of the need for us to honor this book from time to time, to respect it, to protect it to keep it in clean environment and to make sure that we save it against those who want to abuse it. There are many people in today's world who take different actions to obscure the Quran. You are aware of that. Those who are the enemies of the Quran, they are not resting. Not too long ago, people made attempt to burn the Quran. They did that because they wanted to provoke us. They wanted to infuriate the Muslims. Whenever people want to, you know, cause anger for the Muslims, they either threaten to burn the Quran or to insult the Prophet or to insult Allah. What a great ignorance that is. We are not supposed to be like such people. We are commanded by Allah in this book, Al-Quran Al-Karim. Do not insult their gods. Do not insult their medium of worship. Whatever they are worshiping, it's not our duty as believers to insult them. We are supposed to, you know, at the very minimum, you know, ignore them. We are not allowed to abuse them. We are not allowed to, you know, stigmatize them. Because if we do, they will in turn do similar things to, to our faith. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not insult their gods, for if you do, they will insult your God even though they may not know that it is wrong to do so. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, but we know that there are people who are making conscious effort every day of their life to obscure this Quran, to cause obstruction in the way of the believers. We know. They are spending money. They are acting movies. They are, you know, holding meetings, secret meetings every day. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, we have sent it down. To make it clear from other forms of worship that may exist on the planet. And it has come to stay. Unfortunately, there's nothing they can do. For such people, Allah Banu wa Ta'ala says, In Alaze in Akafaru, Yon Fiku na Mwalo Honli Yasudu, Pansebil La Fasa Yon Fiku na Fuma Tokun Ale Hasara Fuma Yugulabun. Those who 
those disbelievers who spend their way to obstruct the way of Allah, either by attacking the Quran or attacking the Prophet of Allah or attacking Allah himself or by creating discomfort for believers. Allah's man of what Allah say, don't worry about their expenditure. Their expenditure will turn around and hurt them. It will cause fitna for them. And at the end of it all, they will be humiliated and they will be gathered in punishment on the day of accountability. So that's a sufficient, you know, assertion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, our responsibility as believers is to make sure that we show good example. If we respect the Quran truly, there are those who will respect the Quran, even though they don't believe in it. But if we abuse the Quran or neglect it at home and outside, there are those also who will help us in abusing and neglecting the Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to allow that to happen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Quran a true guide for us and take shaitan away from our lives and take our life far away from the shaitan. Rabbana tabamina in naka anta semiyon alim, otubu alayna ya maulana in naka anta ngafurum karim. Allahumma asli nana di nana lazi wa ismetu amurina. Wa asli nana dunia na leti fiha maashuna. Wa asli nana akhiratana leti ileha maaduna. Allahumma jalil hayata ziyadata an lana fi kuli khayt. وجعل الموتى راحة لنا من كل شر برحمتك يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم زينا بزينة القرآن وأكرمنا بكرامة القرآن اللهم دخلنا جنة مع القرآن اللهم أجعل القرآن علىنا في الدنيا كرينا وفي كبر منسا ونسا وفي قيامة شافيا ومشافيا وعلى صراط نورا وبرهانا وإلى الخيرات كلها دليلا وإماما ومننا يا الله ومننا يا رحمن ومننا يا رحيم بفضلك وجودك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين ويا رحم رحيمين ربنا تبالمنا إنك أنت سميع عليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت الغفور الكريم سبحان الله وبيامدي سبحانك اللهم وبيامدك نشهد على إله إلا أنت نصيفك وعتوب إليك الحمد لله